In Portland, Oregon, journalist Brandon Farley is investigating a fire, and this happens. Can I help you, man? Need help? Can I help you? Oh, uh, no. Why is it my video? I thought someone was on fire here. Never mind. He's even cooking here, man. Please delete the video. I was, I was. No, leaving. please delete the video. No, I'm not gonna delete. Man, you have a permission to cut. You just hit me, punk. I don't give a who you are, punk. You, what, what? Delete the video. Delete the video. I'm not deleting the video. No, I'm not trying to get stabbed either. Though. So shout out to Brandon Farley, aka the real Farley on Twitter, for being brave enough to document what's actually happening in Portland, as he knew how bad it was getting, as his best friend had a similar interaction a few months ago. And luckily the police were able to get the situation back under control. So this just must be a common occurrence for Portland because I don't imagine they only go after citizen journalists. So now it kind of makes sense when a place like Walmart says our establishment is simply too classy for Portland. Now a lot of people react to hyper left areas like Portland and simply say you get what you vote for. And seeing how Aura's post after nearly getting shish kebobbed is this person needs help not jail. So shout out to Aura and her saint level of compassion and I mean that genuinely because if that almost happened to me my knee-jerk reaction wouldn't be how do we spend more tax dollars on her or place the blame on societal failures not the woman chasing me with a blade because witnessing Portland trying to combat their homeless and substance crisis you see posts like this where activists tell people that used syringes cannot be thrown away as they might be someone's property and from Fox 12 in Oregon they report on an organization supplying and setting up a tent outside someone's house but when the resident asked them to leave the guy threatened to burn her home down and when the police arrived no arrest was made because apparently no crime had been committed. But wait, there's more, as they're trying to pass Senate Bill 603 that gives monthly payments of $1,000 to each homeless person, where Daily Mail reports it would cost them $14.6 million a month. I honestly don't get it. They know what their issues are, and somehow they keep doubling down on them, with Democrat cities nationwide all desperately trying to outdo each other. It's like this modern day space race, except the goal isn't landing on the moon, it's having the population of the moon. Because like this Portland video, I covered how Seattle had their own axe attack, how Los Angeles did their Hollywood rendition with a pickaxe attack. So sometimes it's hard for me to speak on areas I haven't been to in a while, but being in Los Angeles, I'm telling you right now, do not believe the official crime stats. I remember when an employee of mine got robbed with a knife. LAPD came out to take a report, but he was given two separate police reports for one crime. One was for petty theft, and the other one was for brandishing a weapon. I'm sorry, since when do we treat felonies like Kit Kats? Breaking them into two smaller, more digestible misdemeanors doesn't change the fact that you're essentially giving a armed robber a pass. But granted, this incident occurred years ago. So what's California doing now? ATLA 5 reports they're trying to stop canines from fighting crime with LAPD releasing the identities and photos of their undercover cops to the public. So it's been fun, Los Angeles, but I think it's time for me to go. And if you have any suggestions on where I should flee to, let me know in the comment section. But if you appreciate my concise, lighthearted commentary on what's really going on in the world, hopefully I've earned your subscription, then check out my video on the other axe attack in Seattle, or whatever nonsense the internet's cheering on today.